a third of your sentence. So that means you were looking at 15 years and you got it in five. Absolutely. Now, now look, now, now in that case, you would get out in 10, but I hear your point. But keep in mind what we're talking about, like, you know, the, our goals of the criminal justice system. That if our goal is to like, you know, um, make sure that we like, you know, punish these people as harshly as possible, um, then yes, and longer sentences can absolutely be an advantage. But if somebody is getting to prison and they have shown some evidence, some evidence, some evidence that they've actually uh, reformed and rehabilitated and can exist in the space and not cause problems, um, the, our legal system, one of the, 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 the distinctions about it is that we believe that people can be reformed. And in my opinion, they should get less time, even murderers, even murderers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that also depends on the judge too, because they also in the book how, depending on the judge, they can boost the um time to fit the crime. So like, if they feel like the time that you get don't fit the crime, they can make it to where you get more time. Absolutely. The the pattern though is we it, it, as they talk about in most of this chapter, the pattern has been the reverse. That it's not a lot of judges that are really making these decisions. A lot of like one of the things that we're talking about here is that so much of the decision-making process has been taken out of the judge's hands. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you discussing these things because these discussions are really important after you all have read. But what they're saying is that for the most part, judges, and, and there's not a lot of evidence to support this, but the view is in the 1950s and 60s that the judges were being too soft. And somebody might commit a murder and they say, okay, look, you can spend three years in jail or go on probation and then they end up going and murdering somebody else. That's awful. But those are exceptions. That didn't. Ha that's not usually what happened. So, as a result, the politicians, the politicians, the politicians, took a lot of power out of the judges' hands. That's what we've been talking about these in this chapter. Is how the politicians have gained uh, mandatory minimums and things like that, where the judge has very little say whatsoever. In most cases, and again, very good questions, good discussion blends right into what we're talking about here. That in most cases there might be some balance where again, you get like, so like um, for most of our history, if you commit a robbery, the judge would have to look at that evidence and decide, you know, uh, some of the things you talked about, the, the prisoner's background, the um, uh, how much they stole in the robbery, um, the type of, uh, if they got family or something like that. Or if they had previous, um, previous record. Absolutely right. That was the first thing I mentioned. Their, their uh, criminal history. So within those things, within those things, a judge can like you know uh, look at all those variables and make a consideration. With uh, more structured sentences, the judge had very little say so. The judge would have less and less say so. Again, make sure again um, that you're taking good notes, but don't only take notes on what's on the screen. Don't only take notes on what's on the screen. Um, again, hopefully uh, you're reading this chapter ahead of time, and it should be reviewed. And if you do that, uh, the, the concepts are pretty uh, straightforward, but it's a lot of information. So um, I want you all to do as Malik did, uh, to come with some questions and uh, you know, in, in your own thoughts about some of these things you're seeing. My hope is that some of the stuff you're seeing in this chapter will probably offend you. So in this way, right, the judge, if you get convicted, if you get convicted for a robbery in many states, it's five years automatically, at least. Judge can't decide like, okay, well, hey, they, it wasn't that harsh of a crime. Okay, nobody was har harmed in the robbery. The judge can't um, get involved in those decisions. It's five years for this type of crime, no matter what. Now, what they can do is add on more or less years uh, in Nigeria based upon things like your criminal background and the, uh, the background, unfortunately, the background of the offender. You said, excuse me, I didn't mean to cut. You said, you, you said add on as in like the years? Yes. That they, okay. So it's like, okay, look, if you commit a robbery, it's automatically five years. If you commit this robbery and you assault somebody while you did it, then you get some more time. If um, you commit this robbery and you shoot somebody while you um, in the process of it, you get some more time. If you commit a robbery and you shoot a little kid, you're going to get even more time. So all those kind of things are taken into consideration. But it used to be, again, that you know, a judge would determine all of that. The politicians have taken a lot of the um, decision making out of the judge's hands. And 
we talked that we'll talk about like again right m much of your paper and uh again even though that assignment is not due until march you know uh it's going to come up very quickly so please don't procrastinate on this assignment please don't procrastinate if you dive into it as an assignment you can get done pretty quickly uh you can get send me some rough drafts get you 15 out of 15 and you know uh, uh move on to other things with your life but don't Wait. procrastinate Will we have to go to the writing center for your class for the, um, our paper? I don't mandate it, but it is highly recommended. It is highly recommended. It's highly recommended. Again, particularly know yourself. Uh, writing is a, a challenging concept for all human beings. One of the most uh, frightening things uh, just behind public speaking of most Americans. So it's okay if uh, you know you make some mistakes with your writing. I'm, even for my writing, I feel very confident by my writing. It's nothing I'm turning in Malik that ain't that somebody else hasn't had a chance to look at first. I'm human, I make mistakes. And when we look at things, a lot of times it's really easy to gloss over them. So I highly recommend, and, and if you do Nigeria, I would recommend that you do it later in the process, like right before you get ready to submit your final draft. But good question. So again here, right, the, the initial thought was that judges Malik, because so many of them will be white, that they would give harsher sentences to black uh, to uh, black people in the courtroom, and I'll say this would happen. So there was some thought that taking this power out of the judge's hands would eliminate some of these biases. Unfortunately, it did quite the opposite. So as I said in your papers, one of the things that you got to look look at right is explaining the prison population increase since 1980. We talked about Janai in chapter one that in uh, criminal justice and in science in general, we look at empiricism. We, we use empiricism. Does anybody recall what we mean by that? Using empiricism. Look that up. And again, you're going to get some good, helpful notes here today. The notes are useless if a week from now, I'm asking you things about all this stuff that we spend time to talk about. And young people with your young fertile brains, your young active brains, cannot remember things that a senior citizen probably could remember. What was the what was the question again? What is the, what what is empiricism and why is it relevant for criminal justice in all the social sciences? And you shouldn't have to like look for it on your phone. Like it, again, we 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 talk about these things. We're having a conversation right here now, right? So again, like, you know, if if sometimes like, you know, and I'm not always perfect with this. If my girl be telling me something, like if she's telling me something about her day and we having this conversation today, she would have every right to be upset with me if like, you know, next week she's bringing this stuff up and I don't know what she's talking about. Like Kareem, like we spent 30 minutes talking about this. Like you wasn't listening. Like, oh no, I, I was watching the Super Bowl, my bad. That'll happen sometime. If I got something else to do, I'll tell my girls and I like, hey, I ain't gonna be able to give you my full undivided right now, babe. Let me holler at you in a few. And when I can like fully give you my, uh, you know, give you my full attention, I'll call you back at that time. This lecture is available for you all when you can give it your full undivided attention. But it's an expectation of young people that again, if your brain is active, unless you got some kind of mental defect or you got Alzheimer's or some shit like that, when we talk about these days, you should actually be able to remember them. I don't have any senior citizens in this class, right? Like I joke, right. but like it's come on. Like empiricism, quite frankly, is something y'all should have had stuck after y'all freshman year of college. The reason why these things don't stick, Malik, is that y'all take all these notes down and then after class, y'all never look at them again. That's not a very intelligent decision. So the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 1984 tried to adjust uh, putting some sentencing guidelines where we won't have it where in one state, if you, um, if, you, uh, if, if you commit burglary, you're getting 15 years. In another state, you're getting three years. One judge is giving you 25 years for one crime. The same judge is giving you five years. So we wanted to have, so we began to introduce some federal sentencing guidelines that says like, okay, look, anybody that commits this type of crime, this is the type of like sentence you get. And keep in mind, right, we talked about, you know, um, in the beginning of class, um, the Romans, the Kodo Hammurabi. Again, this is the part where y'all got to be listening, not just daydreaming or whatever y'all be doing while I be talking. That 
in Roman times, they just gave everybody one kind of punishment. If you committed robbery, everybody getting their hand chopped off. You can, if you commit murder, everybody gets the death penalty. We saw as human beings, that was not the most effective way. So we, we began to have structured sentences where again, different crimes, uh, different times will fit different crimes. But even within that, a judge might use their prerogative to give very different sentences. So we want them like, okay, look, you can't be giving nobody like, you know, 15 years, like, you know, for jaywalking. You can't be giving like, you know, um, somebody 10 years for petty theft. You can't be giving somebody like, you know, a year for murder. So the Comprehensive uh, Crime Control Act of 1984, and again, that's something that you see in italics. One of the things you also want to look for here, right? Um, again, like, so it, it is, I can live with, you all not understand looking at this slide and you not having a clue of, um, of why United States versus Booker is important or Blakely versus Washington is important or how the Fair Sentencing Act of 2010 corrected some of the uh, aspects of the Comprehensive Crime Control Act. I can live with it if you're not knowing that today. But this is this um, bullet point are telling you things that you need to know. And if you don't know them, know them today. Take time to study them. This is what intelligent people have done in school for 100 years. It's not a big mystery to it. It's not about being really smart or gifted. All y'all are really smart. Knowing this stuff requires time. And a lot of white people have uh, taken the time to know all this stuff, Janaya, to make black people's lives uh, very difficult in this country. I hope um, you all can find some important reasons for you all to know this stuff. Clearly, uh, the things I'm saying is not uh, making a huge dent. Many of these judges, again, these Caucasian judges, put in mandatory minimums. Again, one of the things you have to write about is why did the prison population increase so much? A judge can no longer say like, hey, we're going to give you five years for this, three years for that. Mandatory minimums. That whenever you come into this judge's courtroom, any judge's courtroom, you know you are getting at least five years for this crime, at least three years for this crime, at least 10 years for this crime. As I said, with the structural sentence, a judge can add on, a judge can add on. So just because it says that you're supposed to get five years for burglary, if this is your, you know, seventh offense or, you know, uh, you are a violent offender as opposed to just somebody that broke into somebody's crib where, um, you know, they were out of town, a judge can add on with that. But there's a mandatory minimum sentence that you will get. In this context, Malik, there's no flexibility at all for good time. Again, many of them feel like you did. That, again, these hardened criminals are, and again, if we're talking about hardened criminals, that makes sense. Murders, rapers, rapists, if we, if, if, if we don't want to give murders, rapists, and child molesters um, release for good time, I personally am not going to lose a whole bunch of sleep over that. Are those like most of the people, again, hopefully you've started collecting data on this. Most of the people that are locked up in the highest prison population in the world are most of the people who are in prison today, on February 8, 2021. Are most of them murderers and rapists? Are you, you're asking? Yes, I'm asking, yes. Are they murder? say it again? Are most people who are in prison today, on February 8, 2021, um, are most of them murderers and rapists? No. No, I would say no. No, definitely not. A very, 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 very small percentage. Now, do your research. I could be making this up. But a very small percentage are actually violent criminals. Most, well, so if, they're, if, if we're not locking up a bunch of murderers and rapists, who do you think are most of the people who are in prison? Drug what kind of crimes are no. No. Nope. Uh, possession of our own drugs. Good. Drug users. Drug users. They not like it. Yeah, so this is not a whole bunch of Dylan Roofs and Jeffrey Dahmers. This is not uh, cats like, you know, uh, Pablo Escobar. These are not, you know, Mafia Dons and people like that. This ain't Nino Brown and uh, Tony Montana. They locking up Pookie for those who have seen New Jack City. 
Do your own research. I could be making that up, but I'm not. So again, keep this in mind, right? That we got to pay to lock all those people up. It is cheaper and more effective. Cheaper and more effective to put those people in drug rehab. Again, what's our goal? In, what's our, again, one of the things we always want to ask, her, it sounds great. And I feel like this, this message is still not fully penetrated. And I'm not trying to like um, tell you all what to think, but I do want you to look at empiricism. Empiricism looks at numbers and how we can look at objective facts about what we're doing, is, if, if it's working or not. Empiricism speaks to, allows us to use numbers to see like, okay, look, if we're locking people up for rape, is it actually causing the rate to go down? We can look at that with numbers. And if the numbers are showing that the things we're doing are not very effective, why do we keep doing these things? And if y'all don't take the time to understand these things uh, critically, you all are gonna be criminal justice professionals that do the same white supremacist and stupid and ineffectual things that we've been doing. So again, it, I'm not impressed at all by criminal justice students that can memorize a bunch of definitions and terms. And then we try and have y'all take the LSAT and go to law school and that doesn't work out. Like that's, it's not a disconnect from that. Criminal justice and law ain't just about memor memorizing definitions and terms, young people. You need to understand a lot. Well, do y'all not understand why we pay lawyers so much money? You gotta know a lot of stuff. So in this regard, right, we had three strikes, you're out laws. And it sounded great. Three strikes, you're out. Sounds great. That again, if we got these people that are committing crimes again and again and again, they're going back out onto the street causing trouble, why should they be able to enjoy their freedom? Again, if you're talking about like some game banger that, you know, shot up an eight-year-old kid, somebody's grandmama, if you're talking about, you know, like, you know, even if you're talking about, um, now if it were up to me, all, all drugs will be legal. A lot of people, because because again, when we talk about like uh, drug possession, like of course we talk about cracking heroin. You know what? A lot of those people is also locked up for the same marijuana that these rich motherfuckers now sell to people legally. That all my life we were told was so was so harmful. So yeah, if I rule the world, I would legalize everything. Because in my experience, locking up like putting people in like uh, now I pay for people to go to rehab. But locking people up to, for doing things that they want to do that, like, again, I don't want to lock people up for being alcoholics. I want to get them rehab. Now, if you could, uh, commit a crime uh, like the Kansas City Chiefs coach uh, appears to do while you're drunk, that's a whole different discussion. But if you get drunk all the time in your home and don't hurt anybody else, why should you be put in prison for that? But many people, again, for nonviolent crimes where, again, um, if you want to like, you know, moralize against people's drug use or alcoholism, that's fine. What we want to look at is what is the purpose of us locking these people up? Is the purpose to keep people safer? Or is it something else? Because some of these crimes here, right? We talk about again, three strikes, uh, the three strikes in your outlaw worked under a premise where. Once you committed your third felony, your third felony, and listen, look, listen, I'm not going to test you on any of this stuff here. Y'all ain't got to write this stuff down. Again, it's like, um, it blows my mind that students be thinking that like writing, writing down the things that's on the screen is actually accomplishing something. That is not note-taking. Jesus Christ. Y'all didn't took a month of notes, and some of y'all don't know nothing about this class, which is amazing. And this stuff is still available to you. Like everything we talked about. Ain't nobody scheduling no office hours with me like asking questions about this stuff. Um, so I can only assume that we've been reading and we understand this stuff. But in our conversations, this stuff don't seem to be sticking. Because when we're going over important information like this, I'm not sure what's going on up here. So please make sure that you're focusing and following me here. We just talked about, right? Let's go back through it all. And when we talk about the sentencing process and we develop a sentencing process in America that was unique to the rest of the world because we didn't think that we just want to punish people the same for every single crime. In that sentencing process, prosecutors have an important role in that. Why do prosecutors have a, such an important role in the sentencing process? 
why do prosecutors have such an important role? This again is like not something that just is about memorizing uh, terms that oftentimes it just involves like spin back a definition. This means, this involves some critical thinking. Why do prosecutors have such an important uh, role to play in the sentencing process? Because they the started off, they, they're giving the, um, the sentencing, just like the, the, yeah, the sentencing, the sentencing, I don't know the word for it, but they're starting it off. So whatever they're saying is what the judge is going to go off of and then be like, they want to lower it or add to it, but they're starting the process off. Good. So what you're looking for there is the prosecutor, the prosecutor is the one that decides to, uh, what charges to bring the prosecutor yes. and, write, and write some of this stuff down again. If you, if you can't write it down now, please write it down later. Because it, I'm gonna, I, I feel, I feel like I have would have a right to be frustrated if I ask this question again, and you're not able to like, you know, give me um, a, a more coherent answer. So yeah, prosecutors they decide what to charge you with or not to charge you at all. Yes, I saw this police officer murder this person with my own eyes. I saw it. Yes, I saw that. But as a prosecutor, I'm going to make the choice not to charge this person with murder. I'm going to make the choice to say that this officer acted in self-defense. Prosecutors get to say that. The judges, like, if there's no charge brought, Janiyah, there's nothing to rule on. The judges then can, like, look at the evidence. What they're supposed to do is look over the evidence and determine your background, uh, the the uh, heinousness, uh, the heinous nature of the crime, um, who was really offended and how they were affected. The judges would decide that, like, okay, look, it's just your first offense. I'm going to give you probation. The probation staff then monitor again, because most people, again, like, you know, as many people go to jail, most people don't. Many people get sentenced to probation, and that involves, like, okay, look, you made a mistake. You had a bad day, Janiyah. We're going to let you be free, but we're going to monitor your behavior over the next year, two years, to make sure that you haven't engaged in any criminal behavior. But a lot of times the probation staffer has a lot of power in whether or not to, you know, to decide to send you to jail. I got buddies who are probation officers. There are things that sometimes they have seen and they're like, okay, look, I don't want to send this person back to jail. So I'm going to overlook this. But sometimes a probation officer can like, you know, really like, you know, uh, bust your balls and, you know, any little small offense. Like, look, you, you know, your curfew was five o'clock. You get back at 515, you're going back to jail. Probation staff has that kind of power. Can anybody explain for me again the power that prosecutors, judges, and probation staff have in the, in the sentencing process? What is the power that prosecutors, judges, and probation staff have in the sentencing process? The prosecutors have the choice on whether they want to uh, um, go forward with processing you at all. The judges, they're going to look at your background and and evidence to see if they can give you probation or give you time. And then the probation staff, they're going to look at after you, after you get your probation and monitor you to make sure that you don't do anything within the time frame. Good. And their decisions, all of their decisions can give you a longer sentence, a short sentence. Very good, Janai Owens. One extra credit point. Now, what type of sentences can the judges give? Now we're talking about the power again of the judges. This slide does not make full sense without the previous slide. Again, they can decide to just give you a fine. All right, look, you know, the prosecutor decided to charge you with assault, Janaya. Um, but you know, you, you seem to be a pretty good student. You're an upstanding member of your community. I'm gonna find you $500 and send you probation. Don't be fighting no more girls at the club. And you know, you won't have to go to jail, but if you get into some stuff over this next year, we're gonna bring you on in. Uh, again, probation, which we mentioned, inter intermediate sentences, and then finally incarceration. This happens to very few people. Again, most crimes are not um, serious enough for us to like, you know, lock people up for. Sentences can be concurrent, they can be consecutive, and then as Malik had mentioned earlier, they can be reduced through good time. And again, the goal, our four goals of the criminal justice system does not entail, let's punish you and ruin your life forever. That's not one of the goals. Again, if you commit a really harsh crime, then maybe, 
But some of the crafts we're going to talk about in a minute, we want to think about the logic of what we're doing. Again, if we don't take the time to understand the logic and all the roles of the, of the people involved, uh, we're going to go in and we're going to uh, repeat this cycle. In the terminus sentence, you can get, again, um, um, a one-year sentence. You can get a three-year sentence. You get a 15-year sentence. And a judge, again, can have some say-so in that. The terminus sentence is different. It's a fixed period of incarceration. And this came, Malik, because, again, look at the notes themselves. They only help you if you look at them, though. That I told y'all, y'all got to write a paper about the increase in prison population. Do y'all see any relationship between, because again, right, if you ain't thinking, you just see in these notes and you're not seeing a connection. The connection is that this prison population increased when we started using more determinate sentences. The prison population increased when we started using more determinate sentences. The prison population increased when we started using more determinate sentences. We see it there again, empiricism, empiricism. We use numbers to measure our effectiveness. Your GPA speaks to the, is, a, uh, is an empirical number that tells what kind of students you are. Is it a perfect way to tell what kind of students you are? No. GRE scores, SATs. Again, empiricism, empiricism. Empiricism, don't just tell me it's warm, tell me the temperature. If I know the temperature, like again, um, as a Chicagoan, where it was, it was one degree yesterday. So like a, a few weeks, like a few weeks back, right? Um, it was like 40 some degrees. And my lady would say, my lady said it was cold. What means cold to you can be something totally different to me. But one degree, that means something to everybody. So empiricism, objective numbers, not your opinion about whether or not uh, there are biases against black people in the criminal justice system. Where is your evidence for this? So again, with structured sentences, judges have far less discretion. The judge should have to read the law. As opposed to looking at evidence, Janaya, increasingly it's like, okay, the law said I'm supposed to do this. So boom, case closed. Again, there were efforts made to try and correct this because we very quickly saw, Malik, that those um, uh, determinate sentences really came down hard on Black and Hispanics. We saw, again, there was a determinate sentence with crack, uh, crack cocaine. And if you had any crack cocaine, it could be like, um, you know, a handful, again, a couple of vowels. It can be like, you know, uh, well, if you got Nino Brown level uh, cocaine, you're going to be doing a lot, a lot more time, but you would get the same amount of weight for powder and crack cocaine. You would get longer jail sentence for crack cocaine. Now, again, most people that do crack cocaine are Caucasian. But when they went to go do the arrest, again, like when I talk about sentencing, like we talk about judges, um, um, prosecutors, and um, and probation officers, we also can include the police. Because when the police wants to go, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, we want to go tough on crime, we want to put less crack on the street. They're not going to like you know uh, white neighborhoods where they will find plenty of crack. They're not going to the dormitories of the University of South Carolina where they find plenty of drugs, and they would. They're going into the hood. So again, people that buy cocaine, right? They're going to somebody's home and like, you know, like individually. Crack cocaine is being sold on corners. It's an open air market. Crack cocaine ain't like that. Ain't nobody finna be buying a whole bunch. I mean, powder cocaine is not like that. People ain't finna be buying powder cocaine on the street. So again, there were cases it tried to uh, change things like these uh, mandatory minimums, such as the three strike law. The three strike law was introduced in California, as I'm sure as you recall from the reading. And again, it sounded really good. We got all this, and, and, and keep in mind, right? Um, the late 80s, early 90s crime in uh, California and LA and San Francisco, in uh, LA and Oakland in particular, she was out of control. Crack, crack, crack. Like the crime did explode, no doubt about it. 
And if they wanted to, like, again, lock up violent criminals, again, people that, like, you know, go shoot up a city block, I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about folks like this. That for their third felony, Curtis Wilkerson, he stole some, two stories, do your research. Could be making it all up. Could be making it all up. His third felony, Malik, was still in a pair of socks. And again, like, look, y'all got to read this stuff, man. Like, there's no way that you can read this stuff and it not stick. It makes the material a lot more interesting and it makes it relevant. Because even though I'm talking about numbers and we see this prison population increase, we see these abstract numbers, I need y'all to under also understand that these are real fucking people. People oftentimes that look like us. Curtis Wilkerson, because he stole a pair of socks for $2.50, he was sentenced to 25, like, 25 years in prison. We've had people that have two stories, sold a slice of pizza. It was a father that stole some uh, baby shoes. He got 50 to life for stealing, a, a, a father got 50 to life for stealing some children's videotapes. Videotapes that, of course, worthless today. 50 to life. Again. And you. Not, 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 you, not, the, not the dudes that just randomly. These were these, I'm sorry, go ahead, Janai. Oh, I'm sorry. No. You said that these crimes, these were their third time? Yes. Or, you, or these just was. Now, great question. These were their yeah. third offenses. These were their third offenses. So some may say, well, hey, look, if they murdered or if they raped, fine. Like, but, you know, like, you know, and I'm not, if, if you want to charge them harshly for those first crimes or two, but after they pay their debt to society, like again, like double jeopardy Malik's means that you're not supposed to be tried for the same crime twice. Again, they, they was mad when OJ got off for murder. They couldn't charge him again. Now they found some other stuff to lock him up for, but it wasn't murder. So in this case, your third offense, your third offense, your third offense is, and these, this was their third offense. And, as, and the judge, Janiyah, if they had an option, a judge would have looked at this like, okay, look, Curtis, you have done too many crimes. I'm not going to let you go. So Curtis is probably going to have to do some jail time if he's a previous offender. And I'm cool with that. 25 years, 25 years of California's tax, uh, of, of taxpayers' money is going to go to house and feed and pay for the medical care into old age of somebody selling socks, of somebody selling pizza. I mean, if that's what we want to do as a society, I, I mean, I, I guess we can. What I hope that you all would think long and hard about is, um, you know, how intelligent this is. Because this is your money again. Like, you know, we, we, we say we don't have enough money to, like, give y'all more, give y'all bigger pay grants. We don't have more money to make sure that, you know, your child in the third grade has an updated book. But we got all the money in the world for this. Again, right? It also doesn't take into account, like Malik, we talked about the biases in economics. Because not only is it people for small offenses, but like one of the things why I really need y'all to be take this education seriously is that be having formal education and then truly being educated, like really changes how you deal and are, are treat with, treated within this system. That again, right? So Dale, uh, Dale Curtis Gaines. He, again, has some small unarmed burglaries. Again, it's different, right, Janaya, that if I come and we're going to sense you differently if Malik um, breaks into my car right now while I'm here in my home. As opposed to somebody coming and like, hey, give me your car right now with a gun. Like, we, that's, we, that's different, right? When we agree, logically, that one person is more of a threat than another. Again, we know all types of people that may have like, you know, well, I won't speak for y'all. I know people that may have gone into like, you know, uh, people's dorm rooms and robbed them left and right. And it's not the same thing as somebody like using an automatic weapon to like, you know, uh, rob. Additionally, we like a judge should be able to look at the background. But when we have mandatory minimums on Janaya, the judge can't take into consideration that, hey, Dale Curtis Gaines is mentally retarded and he reads at a kindergarten. Like, so we talked about uh, the classical school said that people have to be rational. That you that rational rationality involves being able to understand um, pros and cons, understand like um, 
uh, punishment and, and rewards. People that suffer from uh, mental retardation, they can't fully comprehend the world that way. But we're gonna put people like this in prison for 25 years. We safer because of that? It ain't like the uh, it ain't like the murders went down in LA and stuff, man. So again, we want to like uh, rapists, murderers, even people like R. Kelly and Bill Cosby. I'm not gonna cry for them. And we want to put them in prison for a long time. I can live with that. My nephew's in there right now. He did some real stupid stuff. Uh, he uh, he tried to use his uh, ba uh, tried to get a, a, a you know, and I don't want to put his stuff out there too bad, but this is public record. He tried to um, he got a credit card in his baby mama's name, uh, rented a car from over here airport in Chicago, and then Malik tried to sell the car. He's gonna do a nice little minute. But he ain't no violent person. He's he's stupid and ignorant as hell, unfortunately. But he's not a vile, he's not a threat to anyone. He should do some prison time. I'm not gonna say he shouldn't. Uh, Rashid is about 21 years old right now. I'm not sure if he should have his entire life ruined because of that decision that many people would make if they were in similar positions. Again, he shouldn't have did it. We're not trying to say that people should like, you know, go on the street if they commit a crime. Should they get the death penalty? Should they get 25 to life? We talked about the role that judges play in this, uh, in, in this, uh, you know, in this process and how politicians have begun to take the power out of judges' hands. We'll begin Wednesday's class by looking at a, a famous, like um, a case study in this regard that really begins to inform how um, we took away the discretion from judges um, and how very much this uh, discussion is connected to politics. Again, I hear many people say that they don't really care about politics, they're not really interested in it. That would be a strange position for uh, a criminal justice major to take. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why, uh, continue to talk about some of the reasons why that is on Wednesday, if you haven't heard those already. Again, um, if this information, uh, there's a lot of information here in this class and the last that will help you for your papers, but it only helps you if you got the critical thinking, if you're gonna use the critical thinking skills. I was gonna say, if you got the critical thinking skills, but I know you have those. I know you got them. I've seen you all use them before. Let's use them consistently so that we can become more effective criminal justice professionals and we can pass this class. I'll see you Wednesday at uh, two o'clock.